Welcome into the In the Money podcast for KeenelandSelect.com. Tom Leach, along with Keeneland's director of simulcasting and mutuals, Jim Goodman. Just a week away from opening weekend of the spring meet at Keeneland, but we're focused down on South Florida for Florida Derby Day, and they're all stakes pick four at Gulfstream Park. Jim will start out in the 11th race, which is Phillies and Mares going long on the turf, a mile and three-eighths. They're four and up in the grade three Orchid. And both of these first two for Phillies and Mayors four and up on the grass, I thought were hard to, to narrow down to any great degree. Who did you land on in the Orchid? Yeah, they're not, uh, if we're going to talk about a pick four in a few minutes, they're not races that you can single. I, I did narrow it down to three or four horses. Um, and I'm assuming the weather's going to be good down there and, and they'll stay on the turf. And, uh, this is a nice race. And I, I think Photo Call is probably going to go favored, uh, simply on back class. But I had a question mark here. Uh, with a distance, uh, she hasn't, uh, she hasn't been the mile and three sixteenths and I couldn't find anything in her back performances. She did go a mile and a half a couple times and, uh, in this race last year, which was run at a, at a mile and a half, mile and a half, uh, she kind of faded in the stretch. So I'm going to try to beat her. Uh, I'm going to put her in my pick four, but I'm, I'm going to take Maximova. Um, she's my top pick for Clement and Bravo. She ran behind some really nice horses the last few races. Goldie Esponi, Rosalind, K Dancer. She's experienced at the distance and at longer, and I think, you know, Clement gets them ready, and I think uh, she's going to be uh, my favorite anyway. Uh, I'm also going to take the other Clement horse, though, uh, Chrysalis, the uh, French bred, the one horse for Le Peru, who's been off since November, but she's only had four North American starts. She's four for 13 lifetime, and Le Peru lately at Gulfstream has done really well taking horses to the lead on the turf, and uh, I think she might... Uh, inherit the lead here. She can get out of the gate. Uh, she didn't get out the last time. Goldie Esponi got the lead, but I think she may be the, the speed here. And then the other horse that I would put in uh, simply because of uh, Bill Mott has been so hot down there the last couple weeks at Gulfstream is Suffuse, the uh, Great Britain horse who's first time in North America. So I would use uh, Suffuse with Lescano in the pick four, so I would go four deep in the pick four. Maximova would be my top pick. I ended up... Um going to photo call for the for the win pick uh i wouldn't take her on at a short price but i thought maybe on a so-so effort last time and maybe you'd get uh, a a decent number um i like the fact that castellano sticks around to ride and the pace was kind of slow last time so i think she could could bounce back with a much better effort i like both of the clements too i think there's another mod in there the seven song of fire and ice uh so i would use both of the mods both of the clements just out of respect for the trainer and if your budget allows, uh, maybe even add Quiet Kitten. So I would it, it, ideally try to go six deep uh, in here. I um, had trouble coming up with a strong opinion in the Orchid. Twelfth race is the grade two Honey Fox. And I came to four horses here for my pick four ticket. Uh, for the win, at Celestine, uh, second off the layoff. And that's a 24% angle for Mott, even though he's so good coming off the layoff. He's just as good second off it. And then this horse is two for three at a mile. So I like both of those numbers. Tammy the Tor- Torpedo for Chad Brown. Sandiva for Pletcher. Uh, there's another Mott Lady Lara that I've uh, picked and lost with many times. But I figure I better put her on the ticket or she'll beat me. So um, all four of those I would use on my pick four ticket. But uh, Celestine would be my top pick for the win in the Honey Fox. I use exactly the same four. Uh, and I would give Tammy the Torpedo a slight edge here. Um, lightly raced four-year-old for Chad Brown. Had a great prep in the grade three Sewanee River when uh, she went wire to wire, so she's obviously got some speed. Hard to separate Sandiva and Lady Laura. They run head to head, and Lady Laura usually comes in on top by a little bit. Uh, they ran one two in this race last year. Sandiva is three for four at Gulfstream Park, but 0 for eight lifetime at the mile distance, so she's a little bit better at mile 16. And the other horse, Celestine, was the other obvious use in here for Mott. Um, and I've got in parentheses leave out at your own peril with bill mott so i would use exactly the same four but tammy the torpedo would be my choice here 13th race is the grade two pan american this is for the boys going along on the turf at a mile and a half and uh, again a race that uh, i thought it was hard to to narrow down to any great degree how did you see it well i didn't pick grand tito last time and he burned me at nine to one i i, I really i had picked him a number of times on our podcast and and he'd been very consistent. I just thought he was a little overmatched last time out, and he won by by a length and a quarter in the Mac Diarmande. So at a mile and three eighths, uh, this stretches out a little bit to a mile and a half. Uh, he hasn't been that distance, so that's a question mark. But uh, I still like him here. Castellano uh, takes the mount, and he rode him back um, 
in the Miesk approval in July and won with him. So Castellano is, is familiar with him and obviously one of the best riders in the business. So I like Gran Tito here. I'm assuming Seeking Alpha, the 9, and El Prado Olay, the 6, will contest the lead. If that doesn't happen, one of those two could go wire-to-wire. A uh, mile-and-a-half race always worries me. Everybody plays the closers, and sometimes it's uh, con- it's uncontested speed that wins. And Kaigan, the 1, ran big in the Magdi Armande against uh, Gran Tito and is capable on his best day. Wake Forest, the 7, uh, hasn't started since the Arlington Million, but I would, uh, if I on a big ticket, I would leave him... Uh, Leave him in for Chad Brown and Johnny Velasquez. Kind of hard to leave him off. So I would go five deep here in the pick four with um, four, uh, one, four, six, seven, and nine. Grand Tito, the four, would be my choice. I would use all those plus the ten Montclair. Uh, so I uh, am mm-hmm. going deep in here. One thing on Oprado Olay, I think that's a, a real price horse. And uh, our friend Tom Hammond is part of the ownership group on this one. And I know when this horse ran, I think it was either ran or was scheduled to run at Keeneland last fall. And um, just really doesn't like the the track with any give in in the ground, so you can draw a line through anything less than firm. So should catch a firm going. I'm hoping uh, down at uh, at Gulfstream, and uh, I thought ran big last time. So that's a horse at a price that I think could be dangerous. But for the, if I had to pick a make a win pick, I would take a shot with Wake Forest. I think you get a decent price and. This horse is first time into Chad Brown's barn. He's 25% with newcomers. And, of course, it's group one placed, so has some class. And uh, if you get a decent price, uh, I would play Wake Forest if you were making a win play. But for the uh, for the pick four, it goes deep as you can. There's six of them that I like, the one, four, six, seven, nine, and 10. And to the 14th race, the grade one Florida Derby. So my pick four ticket starts out with four, one, three, five, six, seven. And that's in order of preference. And I say that because folks can, can take this advice for what it's worth and, and pare down their ticket accordingly. Then I like um, 2, 5, 4, 6, then 7, 9, 6, 4, 1, 10. And that's a lot of numbers. So to play all those numbers, I would really, for a budget, have to single in the Florida Derby. And I would do that with Nyquist. Uh, I love the uh, three-year-old debut with a 101 buyer, which was like 12 points higher than he'd ever run before. Doug O'Neill's really good on the sprint-to-route move. I think this horse will get first run on Moy Heyman, and uh, speed's always really dangerous down at Gulfstream, and I think it may be hard for Moy Heyman to get past him in the stretch. So to play a pick four, I would take uh, I would just single Nyquist and use all those others, or if you want to use Moy Heyman also, then pare down the other three legs. That's why I gave them kind of an order of preference, and you could pare down the uh, the other legs and uh, add in uh, Moy Heyman just kind of as your budget allows. But I think one of those two. The only other one I would think that you could even take a look at in the Florida Derby would be Take It to the Edge, which is a, uh, coming off only a maiden win, and just unless this horse for Romans would be something off the charts good. Uh, otherwise, I don't see anything else with enough upside to challenge either of the top two. So Nyquist is my pick to win the Florida Derby. How about you? You're a brave soul, singling against an undefeated <laughs> East Coast champion trained by Kieran McLaughlin, yeah. for a Lexingtonian. i I got to use both of them here. Um, and uh, there's two ways I would approach the pick, uh, the pick four. I would, um, I would go one, three, four, six. With two, four, five, six in each ticket, and on one ticket I would single the four Grand Tito in the third leg, and I would use both Nyquist and Mohamed here. That, that's a sixteen-dollar ticket. Uh, the other way to go with a bigger budget is I would use exactly the same horses in the first two legs, and go deep in the third leg with one, four, six, seven, nine, and that's an eighty-dollar ticket. But there's no way I have enough confidence in Nyquist to not put Mohamed on my ticket. Um, I actually like Mohamed a little bit better just because he's two for two at Gulfstream and Nyquist is shipping across the country with one prep race. Um, he is certainly, I mean, there's there's no doubt. They're, they are the top two derby prospects, and they're right now hitting shoulders against every, above everybody else simply because they're both undefeated. Um, but I, I like Mohamed here. I love Nyquist. Um, it's going to be a great race. I'm very surprised that they found eight other horses to run against yeah. them because we talked about this with uh, – Rogers Beasley and talking about the bluegrass stakes and potential horses coming here, and but they obviously filled this race out with some horses that have no business running a Grade One. Um, the other, yeah, the only other horse that I even think could 
jump up is the Romans horse. The other horses ought to be running allowance races, and, and that's they got ten horses, and that makes it, I guess, a better betting race if you go deeper than two in it. But it's a two-horse race to me, and I, I can't choose between them. If you made me choose, I would choose Mohamed just barely. It'll be a fun race to watch. Now, there is a derby prep up the road at Turfway Park on Saturday. It's the uh, grade three spiral stakes, and um, – I, I looked. I went to Arrow Force in there. Um, was horrible in the Risen Star in his three-year-old debut, but he's working well. And uh, Mark Cassie, when he brings horses in for this day, they usually run pretty well. And I'm sure they're they're looking at this horse to get the points for the Derby because he's already won at Churchill Downs on the dirt. So uh, I think that they have to have a, a decent amount of confidence that he's going to get back to his his best form in this race, uh, or they uh, wouldn't wouldn't be taking this shot. But uh, Cassiopeia, uh, Azar for Pletcher, the other ones I'd look at. How about you? I, I kind of like Jensen, uh, simply because Larry Jones has um, uh, got some history with uh, Jensen's grandfather, Hard Spun, uh, on the synthetic, and, and uh, he likes this angle, and Giroux goes to ride him. And I, I, I like Jensen here. Uh, Arrow Force is probably going to be the favorite, deservedly so, but uh, might be a little upset in the making with uh, Larry Jones's horse. Best of luck on your wagers for the Florida Derby or Spiral Day at Turfway or wherever you're playing. And uh, keep your accounts funded at KeenelandSelect.com because the Keeneland Meet starts next Friday. For Jim Goodman, I'm Tom Leach. That's the In the Money Podcast for KeenelandSelect.com.